Okay guys, yet again I am back to help you add kilograms to your bench press. Now I'm a 260 kilo bench presser, that's 573 pounds. Today I'm going to show you the three bench press variations that were instrumental to me in building a huge bench press. Let's get this. We need to have a clear plan and reason as to why we're doing it. We don't just throw exercises in to a program because it looks cool. Okay, or because someone else did it. There has to be a reason as to why we do these things. But as I said, it's a more difficult movement, which is an excellent thing, right? So you're increasing the difficulty of the movement, meaning that you don't have to handle as heavy of a load to get the same amount of benefit from it. Because as I say, we can't just lift heavier and heavier and heavier week after week. And especially if you're doing two bench press sessions a week, there needs to be a clear difference between your heavy day and your lighter, technique higher volume day okay so and welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on youtube cult strength that's right i am here yet again to help you add kilograms to your bench press okay now today my goal is to show you what i believe is the three best bench press variations that you can use in your programming to of course help you get a bigger bench press. Now, variations are extremely important in that process, okay? It's important that we're not just doing the same movement all the time, okay? It's too specific. Even for the most accomplished powerlifter in the world, there still needs to be a level of variation, okay? So that's what I wanna show you today. And now, not only do I wanna show you these exercises, I'm also gonna to explain to you why you would use them. Okay, so how are they gonna help you? I'll explain to you when the ideal time would be to put them in your program because we need to have a clear plan and reason as to why we're doing it. We don't just throw exercises in to a program because it looks cool, okay, or because someone else did it. There has to be a reason as to why we do these things. And uh, finally, you know, I think we'll discuss the ideal rep ranges that you should do for these exercises because that changes as well and perhaps how long you know, how many weeks in a row should you be doing them before you move on and change exercise now if you haven't seen uh, my last few videos i've been putting up quite a few tutorials um, quite a few in regards to building a big bench press i've also put up a squat tutorial and a deadlift tutorial so there's going to be you know quite a big series of essentially me making videos to help you, help make you stronger. That's why I'm here. That's what I really enjoy doing. Uh, so before we get started, do me a quick favor. Please like this video, drop a comment if you would like, and uh, of course, subscribe. And guys, if you can do me a massive favor, if you're a fan of what I do and you want to support this channel, another excellent way, really simple way uh, to help support this channel is simply watch the boring fucking ads that come on. I know ads suck, uh, but if you watch those ads, it literally, you know, helps me. It, uh, it makes all the time that I spend doing this shit worthwhile. So if you can just watch a couple ads, I truly appreciate it. But uh, we'll take a minute. We're going to get stuck into this. Let's get it. All right, guys. Now, the first bench press variation that I'm going to show you today, uh, you may have seen me do it in a few of my videos. It is one of my favorites. Uh, and that is called the Spotto Press. Okay, now... The spotto press, I really like this exercise when it comes to refining and building your competition bench press, okay? Meaning your paused bench press. So if you're a competitive power lifter, you, know, you have to obviously be familiar with pausing your bench press on the platform. And now that is a skill in itself. Now the reason also that I'm not gonna be putting a paused bench press as one of the variation movements today is because I think that touch and go bench press and paused bench press uh, they are two of the staples that we have in our training. Um, so I wouldn't call them variations. That's very much the same thing. One is just competition specific. But the way that I utilize the Spotto Press is it's an excellent way to become really confident and well skilled in the act of pausing the bench press because that's actually quite difficult to do efficiently when you start handling really heavy weights. The Spotto Press is a little more advanced in a sense. I'm not saying that if you're, you know, relatively new to lifting that you can't do it, um, but it is more of an advanced technique. It is 
a difficult movement to do properly, okay? But I'm obviously gonna, obviously gonna show you exactly how to do it, how to execute it, um, so that we can build a big bench press. Now, the main difference with the spot press compared to a regular paused bench press is that we're not actually pausing the barbell on our chest, okay? We're gonna be stopping the barbell roughly an inch, okay? A couple of centimeters, just off the chest. Now, in saying that, <laughs> I'm not telling you to go and bench press without the bar touching your chest. We are gonna be actually pausing that bar dead still for a two count, which is at least one full second of the bar being dead still. Okay, now there is a regression and a progression to this movement as well, meaning if we were to regress something, it would be making it slightly easier, and if we were to progress something, that would be making it slightly more difficult, okay? Now, when you develop this skill and you get good at doing this movement, the goal is to move the barbell just as fast as you would a regular competition bench press. Now, for me, I move the barbell down quite fast, okay? Some people a little bit slower. Now, with the spotter press, the tricky thing is if you're a fast bench presser, is to be able to move that barbell down at the same speed you normally do, but then stop the barbell dead still. It can't be moving, it has to be stopped dead still, okay? This is about creating tension and applying precision to the barbell, to the pause, okay? It's the act of refining the pause movement. And it's much harder to pause the barbell this far off your chest than by actually letting it hit your chest, okay? It requires a lot of strength and control and skill. And that's big when it comes to building a big bench press. I'll keep talking as we go, but first I'm gonna show you a demonstration, okay? The setup is exactly the same as I would normally for a bench press. My grip, now you can do this with a close grip, sure, but the way I like to use this movement, as I said, is for competition purposes. So I'm gonna use a competition specific hand width. So my regular hand width for this movement, okay? Because again, we want it to really apply to competition. And I'll explain to you why that is after I do a little demonstration, okay? so. Pay attention to how I'm executing this. What I'm gonna do for the first three repetitions, I will do a set of five. The first three repetitions, I'm gonna move the barbell a little bit slower on the way down, okay? I want you to really see what I'm doing so you can apply this. For the last two repetitions, I'm gonna move the barbell at the speed I usually would, okay? Full competition speed. So you can see in practice how that precision and skill of being able to pause the barbell this far off my chest, what it actually looks like in practice. All right, five reps. Let's go. Remember the other tutorials, guys, remember how we set up. I'm really focusing on my foot placement, on my leg drive, my hand position, my scapular retraction and depression as we get into position, okay? All right, now my speed. All right. All right, guys. So there's the, uh, there's the spot press. And as you can see, you know, the goal for me is to be pausing the barbell roughly two to four centimeters off my chest. But consistency is key with this movement. I always say quality is important and it's not just repetition, repetition. We have to have intention to be as close to perfect as possible. So if you're new to this movement, don't do as I do, okay? As you can see in the first three repetitions, I was moving with a lot more control just to demonstrate obviously what I'm doing. But then I moved the barbell closer to my speed, okay? So that's taken me a lot of practice and a lot of years. It doesn't happen overnight. Apply it with some kind of a tempo, meaning slow the eccentric movement down so you can guarantee that each repetition looks very similar, okay? We want repetitions to be consistent. We want to be pausing at around the same point, very close to the same point with every single rep. Now, how far out of competition would I, would I put this into my program? Well, as I said, it's very competition specific. So I'm going to probably reserve this 
for my last six weeks into competition. And I'll usually do this on my secondary bench press day, and it will be a little bit lighter, okay, than my heavy bench press work. But as I said, it's a more difficult movement, which is an excellent thing, right? So you're increasing the difficulty of the movement, meaning that you don't have to handle as heavy of a load to get the same amount of benefit from it. Because as I say, we can't just lift heavier and heavier and heavier week after week. And especially if you're doing two bench press sessions a week, there needs to be a clear difference between your heavy day and your lighter technique, higher volume day, okay? So I would personally implement this into my program six weeks out at on my second bench press day. And I would start with a repetition scheme of something like three by five. Because it's very competition specific, we don't need to be doing extremely high volume with this movement, okay? It's we're practicing on becoming really good at pausing a heavy bench press for one rep. That's our ultimate goal in competition. So it wouldn't make as much sense to be doing a spot press for 10 to 15 reps. I would start it at five repetitions and I would bring it down to maybe three repetitions over a few weeks. Occasionally, I might do a single, but it's not a max single. It's a very conservative RPE, maybe a seven to an eight, meaning that I'm keeping 10 to 15 kilograms in the tank. Because again, there's no point doing this movement if it's sloppy at all. It needs to be perfect or as close to perfect every single time because the main purpose of this is skill refinement. Being good at bench pressing will immediately make you stronger, okay? I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but everyone's so concerned about what cycle somebody's on, what supplements they take, you know, oh no, their genetics are crazy, what special program are you running? They're thinking of these are the things that are helping people get really strong. And they can help, obviously, but there's one right in front of their face that's screaming at them, and that is simply to become better at what you're doing. And that's what I'm trying to show you today, okay? I'm trying to show you a few different variations that you can start by practicing and then mastering to becoming a huge fucking bench presser. Now, if you have any more questions about the Spoto Press, uh, then please drop a comment and you can ask. And also I'll just say that I wouldn't run this for more than four to six weeks at a time, okay? I think that's plenty of time leading into competition to really refine that movement uh, alongside your regular competition pause bench press or your touch and go bench press. We'll take a minute, we'll come back and I'm gonna show you the next one. And it's a tough one, I'm not gonna lie to you. Let's get it. All right guys, so there is the spot press. Now I promise you, if you can implement that into your training program and execute it correctly, I guarantee you it's gonna add kilograms to your bench press, okay? No fucking doubt about it. Now, the second variation that I'm gonna show you today, and I'll just quickly say that there's no particular order for me. These are just my three favorites for building a big bench press. But this one is something you may have heard of before, a tempo bench press. Now, to be more specific, I like to do this movement with a close grip or a closer grip. Now, when I was doing this photo press, I explained the importance and the reason as to why I do that with a competition you know, specific grip and that is because I am using it to really refine my competition bench press, okay? Now, the close grip tempo bench press is, it is an excellent exercise because it can be utilized at any point in your training program effectively. And generally for the same reason, let me explain, okay? Now, tempo work is excellent. It is excellent for hypertrophy, for growing big muscles, okay? And it's also excellent for learning, maybe you're, you're trying to relearn a technique or you're trying to correct your bar path, but it's an excellent tool for really perfecting every little detail in your bench press because we are forced to slow things down. Now that makes it a lot more difficult, okay? If you've ever done tempo work before, you probably dread it because it's the fucking pain train. There's no way around it. The goal is total time under tension, okay? And you have to do your best to maintain the prescribed tempo. Now the tempo may be, I'll explain this because people get confused with this. Now there's three numbers in a tempo, okay? One that I commonly use is 300 or 400. You may see them written as 310 or 410, but I'm gonna explain what that means quickly. Now the first number 
is the count for the eccentric portion of the lift. So a three zero zero would be one, two, three with no pause. So press straight away. And also the zero on the end means no tempo on the press. So it's just one, two, three, press like normal. A three one zero would be one, two, three, one second pause, press as normal, okay? So the tempo that I like to use when I'm doing my tempo bench press is 300 or 400, which just means three seconds down or four seconds down, okay? And it's extremely taxing. And I will put this in my program. If you have run the Barbarian program or you're familiar with any of my bench press programs, I really enjoy using tempo work at the beginning of a program, okay? It's an excellent base builder. It's excellent for building work capacity and ingraining excellent technique for the weeks to come in your program, okay? It's a way to keep things more conservative with the numbers because a big problem that I see with people is they like to get carried away with the numbers they're gonna hit early in the program. No one fucking cares what you're hitting on week four of a 12 or 16 week program. Not me, not fucking God or your God or, or fucking anyone, right? No one cares. I care about what you can hit at the end of the program. Okay, so we have this in here for a reason. This is gonna set us up for success for the rest of the program. So that's how I prefer to implement a tempo bench press, specifically close grip. In saying that though, there are times where I will utilize this very close to competition. As I said, it's an excellent variation to utilize at any time because one thing where power lifters go wrong is that they think that during comp prep, they can't get bigger anymore. So they stop doing all their volume. They just do heavy work thinking that the base doesn't really matter. When in fact, you can actually get stronger and continue to add more muscle mass, which is in fact gonna make you stronger. So utilizing some specific hypertrophy work close to competition is still really good. Okay, we're still doing our heavy work. And as I always say, we can't just go heavy, heavy, fucking heavy every set, every day. It doesn't work like that. You see me implement close grip tempo bench press work after my heavy sets. Maybe my shoulder's feeling banged up and I don't wanna handle you know, the heaviest weights that I can. So I add a tempo to it. Next minute I can take 20 or 30 kilos off the bar, reduce the load on my shoulder or my elbow and still get a really hard workout in. Okay, you still wanna work hard you don't necessarily want to destroy your body. So that's another excellent time where you could implement a tempo bench press to your training. Now, I'm gonna give you a demonstration first. We'll do another, we'll just do three reps for this one. Um, I'm gonna move them at the same speed every single time. I'm gonna use a three zero zero tempo today, okay? Now, keeping in mind, you can do this a three one zero, which will just mean you have a little pause on your chest. Okay, so you can add this into your program how you see fit. Uh, it's very customizable, just like any bench press variation. And you could also do this with a regular competition bench press grip, you know? But as I said, the way I like to utilize it is the hypertrophy. And, you know, when it comes to hypertrophy, moving the barbell through a greater range of motion is generally always a better idea. And the close grip means that we're moving the bar a greater range of motion. Now, as I set up, one thing to understand is close grip is different to everybody, okay? I think some people are too excessive with their close grip and it can become slightly dangerous for their joints, for their shoulders. So for me, what it means is a little closer than your normal grip. Some people might call it a mid grip, um, but to me, it just needs to be closer than your regular grip. For me, it's around one hand width. So it's, you know, maybe three inches closer each hand, maybe two or three inches closer, and they're still doing what it needs to do. It's not excessively close, okay? I'm not getting excessive pain through my shoulders from trying to cramp myself into a really bad position, but I'm taking the barbell through its extended range in a slightly different grip to what I'd use in competition. Because as I say, it's, uh, it's important to have your variations and not just to do the same thing every single time. You know, we wanna be strong in different planes, with different hand positions so we can be, you know, a little more well-rounded because that's gonna be better for the long run. So my close grip will be pinky finger 
just inside the ring and my competition bench press is closer to around here. So it's not a huge difference, but it's enough, it's noticeable. Three reps, three second tempo. All right, easy peasy. So, three second tempo, you can make it longer, you can make it a little shorter, but I think, you know, understand why you're doing it. For me, naturally, I'm a very fast bench presser. I bring the barbell down with no eccentric, I would say no control, but it's always control, but there's no time under tension for me, okay? It's into my chest as fast as I can. So for me, a three second tempo is plenty. That is considerably slower than I would normally bring the barbell down. So I think it just has to be considerably slower and more controlled than your regular regular competition press. The only thing I need to add to that is rep ranges. Again, we don't need to go crazy high with reps. It's extremely difficult and there's a lot of time under tension. If you are familiar with my Barbarian program, the program starts with six sets of six, week two is five sets of six, and week three is four sets of six. Okay, so we drop a set each week as we increase the load slightly. For example, you know, hypothetically, you start week one with your close grip tempo bench press, you do six sets of six at 100 kilos. Now, you may not be able to do six sets of six at 105 kilos the next week, so we drop a setback. We've progressed the weight, we've dropped the volume. And then on week three, we can probably get out four sets with the same reps at 110 kilos, and then what you might do is drop the reps down to fours. That's what I did. And then I did six by four, five by four, and four by four, continuing to make small increments with the weights. Very simple, uh, very simple programming, it's just overload. Very progressive overload. It doesn't get much more simple than that, right? Dropping a set, adding weight. Okay, then when you can't do that any longer, you drop reps. Easy peasy. We'll take a minute. I might summarize that quickly. And then I'm gonna show you the last bench press variation that's gonna get you jacked and a huge bench. Let's go. All right, guys, all right, guys. Now, the third one, a little bit different, right? We're gonna go with the incline barbell bench press. Now, I've given you two variations that are on a flat bench, keeping in mind that we should also be doing our touch and go and our competition pause bench press. So, although there are several other excellent variations that can be done on a flat bench. I think that it's really important to include a pressing variation that is on a different angle, okay? And it's still technically a bench press. Now, this movement, I see this movement done wrong, I would say, probably more than any other pressing movement. And I think people are a little unsure of this particular, their hand placement. I see people trying to use the same you know, hand placement that they do on a flat bench on an incline. And I think that's where they go wrong. And a lot of shoulder and pec injuries come from that. Now, I think a lot of people would see the incline bench press as maybe a little more risky uh, than some of the other movements. And yeah, maybe it is a little more risky, but again, it comes down to how we execute these movements and our technique. So any movement that we do can be extremely unsafe but we can also mitigate those risks by doing things a very particular way. So what I'm gonna demonstrate when I show you this is my hand placement. I'll talk you through that a little bit. We'll talk about the range of motion. Where should you bring the barbell down to? Should it come all the way down to your chest? Should it stop a little bit higher? Now, for this particular exercise, the answer is gonna be a little different depending on who you are and your obviously personal circumstances. Now, this is another very versatile exercise that can be used for long periods of time. But I wouldn't use this close to competition. Now, I took this out of my program, and I think between six and eight weeks out normally, I wouldn't go any closer than that to competition. Because again, it's not as specific. So we're on an incline, we're on a different angle. 
We are working, although we're working the same muscle groups, they're being targeted a little bit differently, but there's still excellent value in the incline bench press, okay? Now, what value is that? It's an excellent muscle builder. It's an excellent pressing muscle builder, we'll say. It's great for growing the chest, for growing the shoulders, the front of the delts, and the triceps, okay? It's excellent for building muscle. Now, we're taking out things like the ability to get into a really nice, tight, controlled arch. So we're gonna have to move the barbell through a greater range of motion than we would on a flat bench, okay? We're also typically not gonna be able to utilize the same kind of leg drive. So it is, as I said, excellent for building pressing muscles. It's very general, but I'm sure you know what I mean. It's not that fucking hard to figure out. We'll get a couple of reps in and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how to implement this specifically um, into, let's say, your program. Let's do a little demo. We've got 100 kilos on. I'll quickly add, when I do this movement, 90% of the time I'll actually use a different barbell. It's called a Swiss bar or a football bar. It's like a normal bar, but it has the attachments with the handles that you can hold this way instead of this way. Because for me, I've had several serious shoulder injuries in my life from other sports before powerlifting. And this movement with the barbell, if you're in a fixed position, it can definitely flare my shoulder up. So I typically don't use a regular barbell, um, although sometimes I do if my shoulders are feeling healthy. But you do have that option as well. There's other barbells we can use because, again, not everybody has shoulder problems. Not everybody has the same you know, injury history as I do. Um, but we can still do those movements if that is you. But most people, you should be okay with a regular barbell. You should be okay. Okay, so set up. 45 degree bench, okay? You wanna be able to unrack it. So we still wanna have our, our eyes underneath the bar so we're not too far forward. Now, when it comes to my hand placement, okay? On a regular flat bench, I'm here as I said. If I was to try and bench press like this on an incline, I would have a terrible time. I would feel like I'm gonna rip my shoulders out. So I bring them considerably closer. I bring them all the way into about here. This is what I would traditionally call a close grip, but this is the grip that I have to use for the incline. That's not a bad thing. Again, the ability to take the barbell through a greater range of motion has a greater potential to build more muscle mass. So whilst our other movements may be designed around reducing the range of motion, some of our variations are very good for actually building muscle because we can't neglect that as well. We want to reduce range of motion for our comp lifts. We want to build muscle and build a base through our other lifts to obviously supplement that. We'll go three repetitions, okay, hand grip. My feet are more flat for this one. I'm not up on my heels, okay? Now, I still want to be retracting and depressing my shoulder blades and my scapula, okay? That's still very important. Now, I don't want you to think about tucking your elbows or flaring your elbows. The elbow position will be dictated by the scapula. If you really focus on pulling your scaps back and down, your elbows are typically gonna, typically gonna be in the correct position, okay? I'm gonna explain what can go wrong if we don't do that after this. All right. All right, easy peasy. So, what can go wrong, just first, if you don't retract and depress your shoulder blades? Now, You've probably, if you've been unfortunate enough, seen some horror videos on the internet, usually on the incline bench press, some pretty severe pec blowouts. That is simply because those individuals have not retracted and depressed their scapula. Now on an incline, we are putting this area under such intense stretch to such a great range of motion that these muscle tissues really aren't designed to support that, okay? So when the shoulder blades protract and they come out of the pocket, all of this takes the load, and that's where you see the muscles popping off, right? Really focus on the scapular retraction and depression, and you should be okay. And keep in mind to have that slightly closer grip. Now, should you touch your chest with the bar? If you can, without pain, okay? If you experience shoulder pain, trying to bring it down all the way to your chest, for now, go to the point where you just start to feel the pain. Don't push past that. Over time, gradually, you would like to try and increase that range of motion, which you probably will be able to because taking the barbell through that range, you know, may be new for you. So sometimes you just need a bit of practice uh, to develop strength through that range, which should reduce your pain. But 
don't push through an extra inch of range of motion if it's really, really painful, okay? That's not smart. So just be intelligent and use common sense with that. And finally, with this, what I want you to keep in mind when it comes to your programming is this is very versatile, okay? We can work up to a one rep max with an incline bench press, okay? But I just wouldn't be doing that kind of stuff near competition. I might use this 16 weeks out, and then at eight weeks out, I'll build that to a one rep max, okay? So you can still build to heavy numbers, but I just typically wouldn't use it close to competition. It's an excellent variation, but timing is important. You have to have a plan and a reason as to why we're doing things. The other two bench press variations I've shown you can be very useful close to competition because they're still somewhat specific. This, as you can see, isn't as specific. And if you're wondering why I chose an incline over an overhead press, an overhead press I find doesn't really translate to a lying bench press. Okay, it's a totally different angle. I know this is not the same as a flat bench, but we're still using our pectoral muscles very heavily, okay? On the overhead press, we're not really using our pectoral muscles anymore, so the main muscle group isn't really being used. That's why I wouldn't put that in this video. That's a lot of talking, okay? You may be asking yourself, Reese, are you high? Firstly, I have no idea what you're talking about at all. But we will summarize. I'll take a minute. I'm gonna have a drink of water and we'll finish this off. I have a few more notes that I think will be helpful, but I appreciate you. And again, make sure you like this fucking video, drop a comment and subscribe. You fucking legends, I appreciate you. All right, guys, and uh, there is the three bench press variations that I prefer to use for building a big bench press. Now, obviously, I said there were other fantastic variations that you can use, but this, in my humble opinion, or maybe not so humble opinion, uh, the best that you can utilize for obviously the reasons that I specified, okay? Now, it's very important that we implement these things into your training program at very particular times. Now, I spoke about that obviously with the spot press being something that I would utilize very close to competition. The tempo bench press with a close grip, you know, for me, that's ideal. I will utilize that, you know, in my off season or the beginning of a comp prep program, 16 weeks out or so. But there's also a time and place for me to use that at three or three weeks out or two weeks out. Okay, it's very versatile and you know, there's never a bad time for hypertrophy. We can always get bigger, we can always get stronger. That's always gonna be a benefit. And I think that's where obviously most powerlifters go wrong is that when a powerlifter is in comp prep and they're starting to get close to competition, they tend to get a little lazy with their accessories, okay? So they make all this fantastic progress in their off season, they add muscle mass, they get bigger, they get stronger, then they get to six weeks out and all of a sudden, for some reason, they stop doing all their accessories, they put all their attention and focus into their competition lifts. But for most people, that's just not enough. You still need to keep building that base. You still need to keep adding muscle mass. You can still get better. So that's a very important thing to note, okay? So yes, the variations are excellent, but we need to apply them properly. And we always need to have a goal in mind. We always need to know, hey, why am I doing this now? Is it in your program just randomly because you think it's cool or because fucking such and such said so? No, there's a fucking purpose and there's a plan. And that's always important. If you don't have a plan, you're planning, I would say to fail, but you're planning to be a fuckhead. That's not good. That's not good. And if that's the case, I'm gonna have to sit down with you and your mother, we're gonna have a chat to you about how disappointed we are. But if you can implement these and be smart about it, we're gonna let you off. We may even give you an extra chalky milk to take to school, all right? Just don't drink it all at once, mate. Anyway, Patreon, I have my Patreon. If you wanna support this channel uh, and you really enjoy it um, and you, know, you want more content because there's exclusive content, mentality, mindset, mental health, you know, using and sharpening our mental tools to help us in our daily goals and endeavors, whatever they may be, as I always say, it's pretty applicable to most of us to the gym. And that, that costs around a cup of coffee a week. So again, if you're in a position to do that, only if you're in a position to do that, please feel free. There is some value in there for you. And obviously the membership tiers on my YouTube channel, um, that also will get you discounts on programs, on merch, and priority replies. As you all know, I do my best to reply to everybody. I do my best to reply to all the comments, but fuck, it gets a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, but if you have a membership, uh, you actually get a little badge next to your name and it literally makes it easier for me to see because with hundreds of comments, it gets a little bit, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for here? Get a little lost sometimes. But uh, I appreciate you guys. I wouldn't want it any other way. I want to be lost in your comments. I appreciate the feedback and I appreciate the support. So until next time, I think you all know what to do. You're gonna go to the gym, right? You're gonna go to the fucking gym. You're gonna do all this shit that I'm telling you to do. And you're gonna get a bigger bench press. You're gonna tell your friends about it. You're gonna tell your mum that I had good information and that what I told you helped because I always like it when I'm in her good books. So behave yourselves, go to the fucking gym and I'll see you next time. Let's get it, baby.